I've got a few questions that are the most common, most popular questions that you have asked on our channel or otherwise that I'm going to respond to today so you get finally some sense of clarity towards what coaching is, what isn't, and some of the misconceptions you may have assumed because of what people tell you. Isn't coaching for people with problems or underperformers, not for successful people? Well, if you consider Tim Cook to be an underperformer, you imagine Steve Jobs is an underperformer. If you think LeBron James is an underperformer, if you feel any of the athletes that you love, any of the teams that you love are underperformers, any of the companies that you are really, really impressed by, they're all underperformers, they're CEOs, they're leadership teams. Well, then yes, coaching is for underperformers. Well, I don't believe that you think any of that is true. I believe that you do understand that any of these companies, executives, all of these performers at sports and acting careers and different careers that people have are performers, they're high performers, people who don't really need help but want help because they wanna get extraordinary outcomes from themselves, because they wanna stand out from the crowd, because they wanna create a life that is bigger than they ever imagined. And that is what a coach is for. Coaching is not limited to one type of people. Underperformers can use coaching to become performers, but more importantly, performers do use coaching to become high performers. So coaching is for performers. Coaching is for people who are looking to create extraordinary outcomes in their lives. The second question, is coaching same as mentoring? Well, coaching is not same as mentoring. Mentoring is when you are being mentored by or you are being laid on information by somebody who has done something before. So say for example, you're a business owner and you reach out to another successful business owner in the same field or a different field and ask for their advice, their guidance. That would be mentoring. What the other business owner may tell you are only things that they've experienced in their life and from their experience, they will give you whatever information they can give. They're not necessarily understanding of your unique circumstance. They usually are not somebody who's giving you any creative output that cannot be read in a book. That's what mentoring is. Coaching is where you are really taking a deep dive in the person that you're talking to. You're really exploring their inner world so their outer world can change. So coaching and mentoring are completely different things. Doesn't it take a long time to get results in coaching? Well, no. Coaching can deliver results as fast as the first session. It really depends on the capability of the coach, the interest of the coachee, and the dynamic that they play off each other. Most of the people can benefit by bringing clarity in their lives. And coaching brings tremendous amount of clarity from the get-go being able to start to dive into your inner world and start to explore it and to find what do we even want can be transformative for people and that can happen in as quickly as the first coaching session. But in no way should we place that as a standard or a benchmark for us to know if you're a good coach or not. It's a play. Not only the coach plays an important role in creating transformation for someone, but coachy themselves play a very important and key role in the creating transformations for themselves. A coach will give me all answers I need. Well, the coach will give you no answers that you need. A coach's job is not to give you answers, is to help you see for yourself what is possible, to be able to explore within yourself to find those answers. It's not a coach's job to necessarily give you an answer, but it is a coach's job to help you be able to see the power within so you can finally find your own answers. A coach is more like a collaborator. They are working with you to discover what you may be fearful of, what you may be concerned about. And so a coach's job becomes more so to let that fear go, to help you understand yourself a little bit better so you can finally tune into your inner intelligence and get all the answers that you need. Coaching isn't for everyone. Well, this belief really comes from individuals who think that we are not all equal, that we don't all deserve to be millionaires, have all the time in the world, be happy and joyous. When somebody says coaching isn't for everyone, they really believe that some people are better than others because only better people can hire coaches. What may be the case is not all coaches are for everyone. Some coaches specialize in very specific skills. They're really good at doing particular set of things or talk to a particular kind of person, but that doesn't make coaching exclusive. It makes the coach exclusive and that is perfectly fine. I need a coach who has experience in my work to be able to help me. Well, it's a yes and. Yes, you can use a coach that may have some experience in your field of work and that might help facilitate some of the tactical stuff that you might work together on. But if I was to take a true honest look on what coach really can do, what we find is coaches that are actually with no experience in the field of work of the person that they're helping with are even more profound and important and impactful to that person's career, to that person's business, to that person's life. And here's the reason why. 
You see, coaching is all about perspective. It's about being able to provide a perspective that the person didn't have already. When you have experience in a particular field, sometimes you may come from a place of jadedness. You may come from a place of, I know this and I have experience in this. And that actually discounts your ability to be able to fully be present, fully be curious, and not find the answers as much as seek really good questions. And when you really seek really good questions, you find really good answers in partnership with your client. So while yes, experience sometimes can be beneficial in a coaching contract, a lot of times it's actually better to work with a coach that may not have all the experience in the field that you want their help in. It's too hard to make a living as a coach. There are more people in the world right now that are going through a change and can really use a coach. The challenge that we face is that like starting anything new, when you start a new coaching career, you are developing skills, you are developing capabilities. So when you are interacting with your potential client, you may be not as good as you will be one day. But like any new skill, over time, you become better and better as a coach. And so it becomes easier and easier for you to enroll clients into your coaching programs. The key here is not, is it hard to make a living as a coach? It's not. There are too many open coaching contracts or too many people who are interested in getting a coach too few coaches out there who believe in themselves to reach out and connect with this audience and be able to enroll them into their coaching programs. So it's actually not difficult to make a living as a coach. What is more difficult is to get past your inner dialogue that tells you this is new, this is hard, I can't do it, that it is difficult to make a living as a coach. To make a living as a coach is a very simple process that requires some time and attention, but in time it gets easier and easier. There are too many coaches in the world. Really? We have billions of people living in the world and there's probably a couple of thousand coaches in the world. You see, we as a company, Evercoach, have decided that we wanna empower a million coaches in the world. And while we say a million coaches, to be real and honest, a million coaches is not enough coaches for the world that is coming. You see, in the past decade, we have had more change in society than in the past 30, 40 years of our life. And in the next 10 years, it's going to only get more accelerated with use of technology, with the way we work, the way we function as society, it's evolving. And when change happens, we need support. Who better to support change than a coach? Somebody who can work with the circumstances that is and be able to create new outcomes based on what the current capabilities are. That's what a coach does. And so there are more and more coaches needed. There are too few coaches in the world right now. There are more coaches needed for us to be able to stay abreast to all the change that is happening in the world so we can be a thriving society. Coaching is soft and fluffy. Well, it depends on the coach. Some coaches are soft and fluffy and there's nothing wrong with that. A lot of people need the soft and fluffy. They need the hug. They need that soft energy for them to be able to really navigate their life. There's nothing wrong in being soft and fluffy. But it depends on the style of the coach. There are a lot of coaches which are also very hard. They're very goal-oriented. They're very presence-oriented. They're very plan-oriented. And nothing is wrong with that either. It depends on the coachee, what they need, and the coach, and what their style of coaching is. So coaching is soft and fluffy sometimes, and that's absolutely okay. You need to be more successful than your clients. Well, that's news to me because most of my clients are more successful than I am, at least financially. And also, I read this amazing book called Billion Dollar Coach, which talks about the story of a coach who was a football coach and then moved into business and was coaching Steve Jobs. Now, this person was coaching Steve Jobs. He's nowhere himself a billionaire or build a company like Apple. How was he able to coach Steve? But this false belief that you need to be more successful than your client comes from individuals who think they're mentoring their clients. You're not mentoring your client, you're coaching your client. It is more about how well you understand human beings and how you understand behavioral change and how you understand psychology of being able to help people transform. That really is what is important, not the level of your financial success. Another misconception about coaching is that coaching skills are only useful to individuals who want to be coaches. But in reality, coaching skills can be highly valuable in any career and role. One of the top five skills that make managers great is coaching. And there are three key skills any individual can hone to become a better leader. I share that in the next video. I'll see you there.